Scottish borders. A place of peace, solitude, tranquility. A place where people can come to get away from daily hustle and bustle, relax and enjoy life. But I'm going to show you a stark reminder of why not that's not always been the case. And in fact, the very, very opposite has been true. And gives me a better buzz than coming over the brow of a hill and seeing a historically significant old haunted ruin like this that I've never seen before. Let's go and investigate. Now the Reaver Towers and the Borders were everywhere. There were hundreds of them in the 16th century but nowadays they kind of fall into two categories. One, it's completely destroyed, nothing left. And two, it's lovingly restored, open to the public museums like Smailham Tower and Gilmockie. But this one here, Little Dean, is a category all to itself. Still standing, but in the middle of nowhere, forgotten. Now, if you were ever in any doubt as to the nature of these things, why they were built, you just have to take a look at the number and position of gun turrets that are on this, on this tower. They're everywhere. The castle was under constant attack. The levels of fighting and war and violence in this area, the Scottish borders in the 15th and 16th centuries, was like nowhere else in Britain. Possibly even Europe and possibly even the world. The place was just a giant battlefield between countries, Scotland and England, between Reaven families, everywhere. The feuding, the death and the violence went on all the time. Nowhere for me demonstrates that level of violence like this Reaver Peel Tower in a seemingly quiet, tranquil spot by the side of the Tweed. You could be forgiven for thinking it was a quiet, stately home where people go about their business like they do nowadays, fishing and horse riding and playing rugby, if you want to believe the BBC's Reaver Tweed story. But this, this tower holds the secrets. For a start, look how thick the walls are. They're at least, at least 10 feet thick. You don't build walls that thick for nothing. And then like I've said before, the whole tower is covered in gun holes. They're everywhere, at every level and every angle. It's, I think it's too easy for us these days to live in the borders, this quiet, tranquil place, this place of great scenic beauty, this place where, you know, the world kind of passes you by. It's too easy for us to forget the past, to forget that this really was a throbbing war zone for hundreds of years. This tower, you know, with its gun turrets and its great fortifications, obviously clearly demonstrates that, but these were everywhere. These were on every corner of every glen, every valley and every hill in the borders. 
But now, most of them have been wiped out and we forget about them. They've been written out of history. They're that prohippories of history and nobody talks about them. We all need to remember the pain and suffering our forefathers went through to build this, this region. You know, I was watching the Remembrance Day parades this, this week. A time when we remember, you know, the, the brave guys of this, this area who went and fought in Germany and, you know, other foreign countries. But it got me thinking, why do we not remember the guys who fought on this soil, protecting this land? Yeah, it was a bit further away in, in time, but, you know, when are we going to forget the boys that fought in Germany? Probably never. We don't remember the men of the border. And perhaps being a bit unfair. Because legend has it that there's a great monument somewhere in these lonely hills to mark a battle. A battle fought by the men of the border against English armies. But where is this monument? Let's go and see if we can find it. So scarred by war, so used to fighting and violence, you would think they could have dealt with anything. But nothing could prepare the people of the borders for what was about to hit them in 1544 and 1545. England was under the rule of Henry VIII, and Henry wanted Scotland, he wanted Scotland for himself on political terms and power terms. But he also wanted to transform Scotland in religious terms as well. It was the time of the Reformation. And also, Henry had a personal gripe with the border reavers. He hated these men, they were a thorn in his side. So Henry ordered the complete destruction of everything, every town and every establishment within our area. This is Carter Bar on the Scots-English border. And it was over this lonely hillside in 1544 that Henry's generals and their massed troops made their first foray into the borderlands to carry out their plan, their almost clinical precision plan to exterminate every single person, town and village within our region. And their first target was just over the hill there, Jedburgh. Henry's diplomatic plan to overtake Scotland and merge Scotland and England was simple. He was going to marry his son, Edward, to Mary, Queen of Scots. But the Scots nobles were against that. They refused, which sent Henry into a complete rage. His only method of overthrowing Scotland now was complete destruction. And his main target and his first target was the border. Henry VIII's raids into Scotland in 1544 and 1545 have became known as the Rough Wooing. And unfortunately for people with any history interest in the Scottish borders, the Rough Wooing also targeted Edinburgh. Edinburgh was sacked as well. And anywhere you read now about the rough wooing, all you read about 
unfortunately, is Edinburgh. But the destruction rained down on Edinburgh was slight compared to that issued on the border towns. And the first one to be hit was here, Jedburgh. The entire town of Jedburgh here and everything you can see within it was completely flattened. Nothing was left standing and Jedburgh was merely the beginning. Every single town and village in the border suffered the same fate. However, one of the most appalling things for me about these whole raids was not just the brutality of the way in which they were carried out, but it's the almost accountancy accuracy way in which they were documented and sent back to London to Henry for reporting. This is what the generals wrote about their visit to Jedburgh. The town is completely burned so that no garrison or anyone else can be lodged there until it is rebuilt. The town was much larger than I thought it was for there was twice as many houses in it as there are in Berwick. All well built with many honest and fair houses, sufficient to have lodged a garrison of a thousand horsemen. And there are six good towers there, but the town and the towers are completely destroyed, burned and thrown down. Precisely accurate documents charting how many towns and villages had been destroyed during this raid it was like nothing ever seen before in this country or ever seen again. It was utterly devastating for every single person that stayed in this area. In 1544 there were 192 towns and villages destroyed. 192. The following year in 1545 there were 243 towns and villages destroyed. That was the level, the level of destruction that we're talking about here. But it was in 1544 that although the landscape was being turned into a complete smoking desert, the will of the men was being hardened and their determination to drive the English out or do something about it was getting stronger. All of the border abbeys were destroyed during the raids. Jedburgh, Dryburgh, Kelso probably suffered the worst fate. It was the biggest and most important of the abbeys and it was completely and utterly wrecked. The materials were stolen and used for other building purposes. But it was after the destruction of Melrose Abbey and the desecration of the Douglas graves there that the Scottish Borders men and the Scottish men, the Earl of Angus, and Walter Scott of McClue were really spurred into action to do something they could take no more. And it was here, on Ancrum Moor, that they made their first fight back against the English. As the marauding English armies made their way back from Melrose Abbey down Deer Street, the old Roman road here, on their way back to England, probably still laden with the spoils from Melrose Abbey, metal, food, livestock, who knows. The Earl of Angus and Scott of McClue were lying in wait here at Lillard's Edge, just on the brow of this hill, with a bright winter sun behind them. The English army could see a small force. There were 4,000 English, there were only a thousand Scotsmen. But the bait, the trap, made it look like there was only a hundred or so Scots here. So the English army attacked the Scots on the top of the hill here. When 
when they got to the brow of the hill here, the rest of the Scots and reinforcements, the border men came through the sides and the bottom of the hill here and completely overpowered the English. They were a lot less in numbers, but they were a lot more in heart and soul and pride and determination. Over a thousand English men were taken prisoner and another 800 were killed on this very battlefield. It's probably the biggest battle ever fought on the Scottish border soil, the current day Scottish borders. It wasn't a huge battle in comparison to the likes of flooding, but it was a big win for the Scotsmen and a significant, significant win. But we don't talk about it, I mean, we're, we're part of England now, so you know, we don't want to remember all the bad things that the English did to the borders in those days. So nobody, nobody talks about it, nobody knows about it. But, like I've said, there is supposed to be a monument in this area. A great monument to remember these brave border men who fought against the English that day to revenge the killing that Henry VIII had rained down upon us. But where is this monument? Where is it? monument that you see in this area is the tower on the hill over there. Tiny old huge hill. And you think surely, surely that great majestic tower, that huge monolith over there must be in commemoration of the men who fought here on Ancrum Moor against the English or marauding armies. But no, that's been put up to remember the Battle of Waterloo. The Battle of Waterloo. So where's this monument? Where's this great monument to remember the real men of the borders? Let's go and see if we can find it. Where is it? Where is this monument? It should be up here. It should dominate the landscape. I can't see it anywhere. Yeah, this is it. It's almost an affront, to be honest. Such a small, forgotten, solitary grave on this lonely hillside to remember this this great feat, this uh, great act of bravery by the Scottish border men. There's a rhyme on it, and the rhyme says, "Fair maiden Lilliard lies under this stain. Little was her stature." but muckle was her fame. Upon the English loons she laid money thumps and when her legs were cut it off she fought upon her stumps. AD 1544. It's, uh, you know, we, they're talking about it in a sort of comical sense about one, one woman who, who fought in this battle. You know, there should be some sort of, there should be a bigger testimony to it than that. And the people of the borders should know about the rough wound and they should certainly know about the battle of Ancrum Moor here when we fought back. <laughs>